Hello everyone, we are going to talk about using machine learning to predict the forex market. The forex market has fast passed other markets such as stocks and futures, becoming the largest financial market in the world. The rapid growth in the size of forex market has brought high profit and high risk at the same time. The artificial trading is easy to produce negative emotions and difficult to observe market situation at all times, which makes trading opportunity missed. Meanwhile, under the changeable international pattern and corresponding policies, there are many factors affecting the exchange rate fluctuation. On this basis, we focus on the use of machine learning in event driven price predictions on any oversold conditions. In this project, we use AUD to USD 15 minute data and TELIP to calculate technical indicators to predict max price for the next hours. There are four deep learning models are developed for this task. So my model is made of two parts, clustering and attention. So before going to the detail of the model, I just want to briefly talk about the motivation behind. So in foreign exchange market, I think not every instance can be accurately predicted based on technical indicators only. Things such as monetary policy, physical policy, and political factors can, have a, can all have a huge impact on the price movements. For example, um, if the RBA decides to lower or increase interest rate, or if the government is ready to push out a huge stimulus package, or if there's um, a trade war just started between two nations, they all can have a very significant impact on the price movements in either short term or long term. So by using clustering, we expect the method is able to allocate data into different groups, and we expect data in some of these groups can be predicted accurately based on technical indicators only. So the raw data we are using is 15 minutes open, close, high, low. And from there, we can use TELIP to calculate all other technical indicators such as MACD, EMA, ISI. And in total, there are more than 130 technical, technical indicators that can be calculated using TELIP. Then we create a function to loop all the features into our predictive model for 25 epochs and then we calculate the average loss of the last 10 epochs and use that to rank all the features from the most important to the least important and we choose the top eight most important feature as our input features so this is the overall structure of our model there are two steps the first one is clustering it allocates our training data into different clusters the second one is attention we apply attention to each of these cluster for training so on the right hand side, this is just a flowchart showing how things works. During the training stage, the cluster will disallocate this training data into different groups. And for each group, we apply a bias TM attention for training. And during the, when the new data comes in, this clustering algorithm will decide which cluster or groups this new data belong to. And the new data will then go to the corresponding model for final prediction. So this diagram is to show the relationship between our model's performance and the number of clusters we choose. If you look at the left hand side, we we'll have one cluster, which means we don't really apply any clustering to our training data. And we have a one times e to the minus of six. But as we have a larger cluster number, we can see the loss tend to reduce all the way down to four times to the times e to the minus of seven. However, if your number of cluster reach a certain number, um, the model tends to be become unstable. Um, I think this is because when you have too many clusters, the data size for each cluster gets smaller and smaller, uh, which means the model is a lot easy to overfit in this case. The below diagram shows us the performance between each clusters for AUD USD, as you can see, um, the largest cluster, which has got about 20% of the total data size, has, has got the best performance with MSC of um, less than 5 to the uh, E minus of 7. Um, then the second largest cluster, which is set 13% of the total data, seems to be a lot worse in terms of the uh, MSC. Um, if you look all the way to your right hand side, you can see this one. Um, even though it is only a little bit smaller than the previous cluster, the loss in this cluster is a lot higher, which could be an indicator of um, the data in this cluster 
cannot be accurately predicted based on technical indicator only. We probably need to consider other factors such as um, political um, or other, other factors. So in terms of NOVA contribution, so this model is able to adopt the idea that technical indicators are not reliable for every price movement prediction. And by using this model, we are able to identify and pick on specific instance that we can apply the most suitable model to make a high quality prediction, which means we can have the best probability of making a profit. During evaluation, our data set was split to training and testing right at the beginning of any fish generation or shuffling. And we also leave a gap between training and testing data for about 24 hours in order to avoid any sort of information leaking from testing into training. And then both prediction and the clustering model will be trained based on training data only. Um, on the right hand side, we can see our test result based on the testing data. Uh, we can achieve a test MSE of 6 times e to the minus of 7. And based on the 10k initial capital, we are able to achieve um, 25k uh, in profit based on our trading strategy. For the future works, here are some a, a few important points. First one is how do we find the optimal features for clustering so that the clustering can split the data as the way we expected. Um, second is developing different algorithms to each of these clusters. For some clusters, maybe we can use some NLP related techniques. Um, and for others, we can use attention or transformer or some other algorithms in order to get a better result. Um, the third is how do we keep the model updated to the latest market behavior as the FX market, they changes fast over, over time. And how do we get the model to adapt to the latest market behavior. The last one is uh, we can add some extra functionality and automation to the model so that it can be easily adopted to other financial product trading and prediction as well. Transformers are currently used widely for natural language processing tasks such as language translation. We attempt to use some aspects of the architecture and we try to apply it to our task of forex price prediction. The data set we use is um, AUD USD 15 minute open high low close price data. We also calculate 13 other technical indicators using Talib and we use them as features into our model. Our data set is divided into validate, uh, train and test data. Our results are based on test data alone. Training data is divided into batches of six points of data. And the output label is the high price four times steps away from the last data point in the batch. So each input is of dimension, batch size, sequence length and number of regions. Now, transformers have no inherent requirement for sequential inputs. In NLP, we use positional encoding to give the transformer sequential information about the input. We attempt to use three different techniques to communicate position or sequence information to the transformer. First, we use positional encoding. Um, the positional encoding matrix is the same dimension as the input matrix, and we do element-wise addition of the two matrices to get the input data. The other option we try is we try to pass our input data through a single layer LSTM to capture the time series aspect of the data. And finally, we use a technique called time embedding. In this technique, for each time step, we take the mean of all the scaled features, and then we multiply it first by a randomly initialized linear weight plus bias. And then that gives us the linear time embedding. We also multiply the mean of all the scaled features by the sign of another randomly initialized linear weight and bias to give us the periodic time embedding. The linear and periodic time embedding is represented as two additional features to our input. So the input into the transformer is of size, batch size, sequence length, and number of features plus two. Looking closer into the architecture of our transformer, one of the key components is the unit of multi-head self-attention, and this is what we will aim to use in our model. 
The self-attention layer takes in a key value pair. And in our model, we have used the scaled and embedded input batch data as the query key and value vectors. Scaled dot product attention is used to calculate the attention score. Multi-head attention score is calculated by taking self-attention score and head times and concatenating the results together. Along with the multi-head attention layer, there are normalization, feed-forward network and dropout layers which form the transformer encoder layer. We've stacked the encoder layer in different combinations to find the optimum number of stacked layers. We've also experimented with different functions for the decoder layers and the feedforward network layers. The best result we have achieved is using time embedding, three stacked encoders, a stacked convolutional 1D function as the feedforward network and a linear layer as a decoder. The best results for AUD USD data um, are an MSC of 4.17 times 10 to the minus 4, an RMSE of 0 0.02, and an MAE of 0 0.009. The best result for New Zealand dollar US dollar data is an MSE of 4.03 times 10 to the minus 5, which is 10 times better than the AUD USD result, an RMSE of 0 0.00635 and an MAE of 0.0045. Um, we found that a large amount of training data is required for good performance, otherwise our model underfits to the training data. In conclusion, we can say that positional encoding and LSTM do not capture sequential information required to produce a good prediction of our forex data using transformer architecture. The odd and even index concept, where a sign function is applied to even indices per time step of the input, and the cosine function is applied to odd indices per time step of the input, may not be applicable in our context as we're using features from the same time step and their sequence within a time step is not important. Future work may consider the fact that Transformer architecture is not suited for price forecasting tasks in general. Or we may consider similar to the modification of the embedding layer, we can make further modifications to the architecture, like adding a different decoder or masking layer to get better prediction results. This can be done using an iterative process of trial and error. Another avenue to explore is to try and train the model with several different currency pairs at once um, so that it can generalize um, a good prediction result across several currency pairs. Hello everyone. My model is autoencoder plus CNN LSTM hybrid model. The raw data of AUD USD only have four columns. So we use Tabli to calculate the technical indicators, including EMA, SMA, and ISI. Totally eight technical indicators are generated and there are 12 columns in the data after the pre-processing. For the target specific event, as we are doing the event-driven prediction, we only focus on the samples that have an RSI le less than 30 and drop out the rest. We batch the uh, target sample and its last nine samples together with shape of three dimensions. This batch of data is used to predict the future 16 minutes high price. The autoencoder in our model is served as a uh, feature extractor since it has the ability of learning hidden patterns of the data and also the capability of the key features extracting. This process is similar to dimension reduction. For autoencoder building, we have 108 units in the input encoder layer and the coding dimension is decided to be 27. The architecture is symmetric. <laughs> for the um, training process. Due to the addition of the L1 regular the risk of the overfitting is decreased so that we can have 100 epochs and got final loss of around 0 0.1. In terms of the architecture of the CNN LSTM model, we apply 1D and 2D convolution layer for features extracting as well. And there's a max pooling layer after each convolution layer for award overfitting. Next. 
the output of the NN layer will be the input of two LSTM layers. In the last part of the model, we have applied two dense layers to output the final prediction. For the result, we can see in the line graph, the orange line represents the prediction high price. The model fits the real data pretty good without a certain sharp rise or fall. Secondly, we have MAE, MSE, and IMSE in the evaluation matrix, but we will mainly focus on IMSE. The magnitude of the IMSE result is 10 to the power of minus 2. It indicates that the model performance is acceptable. Further, the bet for bad testing, the model have 215 profits in one year with capital of 10,000. So that's all for my model. Thank you. This is the reinforcement learning part. In this part, we will mainly talk about four points, introduction, achievement, result, and the future improvements. So what is reinforcement learning? In general, it is like how our brain reacts to the surroundings. Our brain takes in observations and optical actions based on the environment and the feedback. In this project, we will use the historical data to train our brain and hopefully the brain can help us to obtain a higher profit. The reason why we are using the reinforcement learning is that it is now a hot topic after the AlphaGo beats the human code master. So we would like to see what we can achieve if we apply this algorithm on the foreign exchange market. Here is our achievement on the reinforcement learning algorithm. And next, let's go to the result part. The best result we obtained is to use the RSI filter data. The specific parameters are shown below. Obviously, the upward trend of the reward during the training process can be observed, and the testing reward increases as well as the training reward. This is an ideal situation for the policy gradient model. However, when we try to change some parameters, the result changed. As shown below, when using these parameters, we cannot observe a clear upward trend and the model perform poorly. After we conduct some more experiments with different parameters and combine these results, we came to some interesting conclusions. First, and also the most important conclusion is that the feature contained in the data is an influencing factor. We cannot feed the model using any data. The appropriate data processing uh, feature extraction or filtering will effectively increase the efficiency of training process and make the road higher. And the parameter like learning rate is always an influencing factor. The learning rate needs to be adjusted by ourselves. If it's too small, it may lead to a local optimum. And if it's too large, the model can hardly learn anything. In addition, we can also try to increase the number of training episodes or the layers to improve the performance. However, this may increase the training time because we don't want our model run for a long time if we are doing a real real-time trading. This conclusion shows that only using policy gradient to train a model is not good enough. So after doing some research, we found that the approximate policy optimization algorithm can used to solve the problems of the parameter tuning. It is more robust than other algorithm because it uses a minerals maximization algorithm, which makes the process of parameter tuning very simple. And uh, the algorithm is not sensitive to the parameter changes as well. In addition, we can try to combine the RIO algorithm uh, with a, a DLS team or use the algorithm like divide and conquer. Uh, there are many ways to improve the reinforcement learning. Choosing a right way to improve the algorithm so that the model can be applied to the real time trading will be the direction of our future improvement. In conclusion, we have implemented four deep learning models with very different basic ideas and architectures. Some of the models have been able to generate good performance comparing with others, especially the clustering and attention model. Based on test data, it achieved the best result with 6.3 times e to the power of minus 7 in MSE, and the profit is up to $24,000. Since our model have been tested or deployed to a live trading environment, many episodes were confident that most model is able to generate some level of positive income. It cannot be used directly without any modification or further development in order to engage level trading. As a future improvement, we can find a way to enable the model so that it can feed on live market data and make decisions that execute trade automatically. We hope this can provide some inspiration and hints for those in the future. Thanks for your listening.